So on this video, I'm going to be showing you how to solve linear and um, linear inequalities, and then I'm going to show you how to also graph them on a number line. So just go through. Um, first of all, solving linear inequalities is the exact same as solving linear inequalities. Bar the fact you've got a different symbol here, and there's, then there's one exception. That's when you divide by a negative number. So if you take a normal expression like this, say, um, and we have a negative in front of it. So say if we minus negative 2x and just to go through the symbols by the way first of all um the different symbols will be this one here which is greater than less than or equals to so you could have 2x is less than or equal to 6 so you can see that the smaller number is where this one narrows out so that means this is less than this so actually just to give a number example you could have say 2 is less than or equal to 6 um, so that just means 2 is smaller than 6, 6 is greater than that. And then if you did it the other way around, you could have 6 is greater than or equal to 2. Or you could also have 2 is just less than 6. So this would mean it's less than, but it's not actually, it's not actually equal to 6 at all. Um, or in this case, if you had an x, because x could be anything, it would make more sense. But it just means it can't be equal to 6 at all. Now, the one exception when you're solving these, if you've got, say, minus 2x uh, is less than 8. In this case here, if you were doing a linear equation, you'd have to actually divide across by a negative number. So you'd come across here, and you'd have a minus 2, and over here you'll have to have a minus 2. Now, in this case, with these inequalities, if that happens, you need to flip this sign. So you need to flip that sign there around. So I'll show you. When you divide minus 2 into 2, minus 2, you get x. You need to then flip this sign. And the reason you're flipping it is because you divide it by a negative number. If you divide by any a positive number, it's fine. You can leave it as it is. Minus 2 into, into 8 then goes minus 4 times. And I'll show you why that is. If you had something like, if we take this example here that we were looking at earlier. So... If you look at 2 is less than 6, if I was to divide both of them sides by a positive number, so if I divide by 2, divide that side by 2 and divide this by 2, I'm left with 2 into 2 goes once and 1 is less than 3. And that's still true. 1 is less than 3. But what if we took it this side and we went 2 is less, uh, minus 2, actually no. So 2 is less than 6. And in this case, if we divided it by a negative number, so we said minus 2 at the bottom. Now, in this case, if you look down at our answer, 2 minus into that goes minus 1 times. And then minus 2 into 6, because it's a minus into a plus, it goes minus 3 times. Now, you can see in this case, there's going to be a problem. If I put in my symbol... I'll just highlight it in red here so we can see because I'm going to change it. I'll show you why this is incorrect. If we put in that symbol there, you can see minus 1. If you think on a number line, minus 1 is actually going to be higher up than minus 3. Like on a thermometer, minus 3 is lower as a lower temperature than minus 1 degrees. So in this case, you're going to have to actually flip your sign around. So when you're solving these, that's the only thing you need to remember for linear inequalities you just need to flip that sign around you can see in this case that makes sense then because minus one is greater than minus three so we'll work into the first example there now um so the first x minus three is less than or equal to five and then it's telling us also x is a natural number so that's going to have significance in a second a natural number is a normal counting number as in one two three four five so it doesn't contain half numbers like one and a half or 1.5 and it doesn't contain negative numbers either. And that, that'll have relevance when we start to graph this stuff on the number line. So step one here, same as our linear inequalities, we keep our x on this side, and then we move over our minus 3. So you can see that'll become our minus 3 moved over here will become a plus 3. So we get 5 plus 3. And in this case, we're going to get x is less than or equal to 8 
only including natural numbers. So I'll just put up my number line now for that. So you can see I've drawn out my number line, as at least I've drawn out the sections that I need on it here. And you can see x is going to be less than or equal to 8. Now the first thing you do is you take your red pen and you go to 8. Now put a dot right there. Now there's two different ways we'll do this and we'll see the other one in the next example. This we're actually going to highlight 8. That's because it could be, could be equal to 8. And then we're going to come down in our line here. And we're going to highlight. Now, the other thing is it's all natural numbers. So we're not including the areas in the middle. So say six and a half. We're only including the whole numbers. So what we do is we highlight seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And we don't go lower than this. And the reason we haven't come down lower than this, even though it's lower than this, it tells you that it's a natural number. So everything, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 are all natural numbers. And then 0 and below that aren't, inclu aren't included as natural numbers. So let's look at our other example then. 3x minus 4 is less than 11. So we don't have an equal sign in, uh, less than or equals to in this. So it'll be slightly different. So we solve it the same way. We come down to our next line. And we say keep our x's on this side. We move our minus four across and when we move it across we need to change it to a plus four so 11 plus four and then you're going to get 3x is less than 15 and then finally divide across by three and because we're dividing across by a plus three we don't need to do anything with the sign in this case so three into three goes one so we get our x and then x is less than 3 into 15 goes 5 times. Now this time, I'll put up my number line here first. So this time x is less than 5. So we'll just get a red pen here. Now, it's less than 5, but it's not actually equal to 5. Um, so first of all, it's not going to actually include 5 here at all. It's going to have to start on 4. The next thing, x is an element of z. Now z is an integer. So this is just different from a natural number in, in terms of it contains negatives as well. So it's whole numbers. It doesn't contain half numbers, but it, it contains whole numbers and it contains negative and both positive numbers. So what we're going to do is going to look for everything less than five. So not five itself. We're going to highlight four, three, two, one, zero, minus one. It's actually going to just continue on there forever. Then we just put in an arrow here as well, just to indicate that we're continuing on going forever in this direction. So we'll have a look at our next example then. So in this case, I'm giving you examples. So this is X as an element of real number. And I'm actually going to just change one thing in the center because I want to show you what you would do if you're not including a certain number here. So um, I'll just change this actually, just instead of a less than or equals to one, I'm going to do a sign less than. So for this one, we're actually going to have a negative at the end, so we'll probably have to flip our sign. So we'll start off first anyways. Uh, keep our x's over here, minus 3x, less than or equal to, so that's going to be 20. And in this case, move this over and you get minus 2. Next thing we do, minus 3x is less than 20 minus 2 is 18. Next thing we do, now we need to divide by something. So in this case, we're dividing by a negative 3. And this is the only difference we have with regular, any regular um, linear equations when we're solving them, is when we've got this inequality, we need to now flip it just because we've, we've divided it by a minus number. So minus 3 into that goes x. Minus 3 into 18 goes uh, 6 times minus or sorry, minus six times and then what we're going to do is we're going to flip this symbol so we're going to change the direction so now in this case it's going to be x is greater than minus six not equal to but greater also it's going to be x is equal to a real number i'll just put up my number line now so first of all because it's a real number 
What that means is it's every single number on the number line. So so real number just means everything. Um, bar something that you'll come across again called imaginary numbers, which aren't included here on the number line. So it's everything. It's all the numbers in between these. So three and a half, 3.2, 3.22, everything inside these numbers. So we remember that x is greater than minus six, but it's not equal to it. So this time, instead of drawing a circle around minus six and filling it in, you actually draw a circle and you just leave it open like this. So it's to show that x isn't going to include minus six, but then it's going to include everything else in your number line. So you highlight right across your number line like so. And just do a bigger, um, bigger line here, just so we can see that. So coming all the way up this direction, you're going to highlight it. And then you're going to put in your arrow to show that that's going to go on then to infinity. So it's every number greater than minus six on your number line.